First of all, I would like uh, to thank the Central European Academy uh, for inviting me to the uh, professor uh, network for organizing uh, current, uh, current uh, conference and giving me the possibility uh, to share with you uh, some remarks concerning uh, legal basis of common foreign and security uh, policy uh, with uh, particular attention uh, on the role of the Court of Justice of uh, EU. Um, the legal framework for uh, CFSP was firstly established in the Maastricht Treaty on European Union on 1992. Of course, uh, I don't want to uh, show how uh, CFSP uh, historically evolved, but I would like to focus on current legal uh, regulations uh, concern, uh, concerning uh, CFSP uh, contained in uh, Treaty on uh, European Union, and uh, I would like to pay special um, attention on uh, uh, Court of Justice of EU and its role uh, within uh, CFSP. Uh, the reform of the CFSP uh, done by the um, Lisbon uh, Treaty in 2007 uh, changed it uh, significantly. Uh, the Lisbon Treaty uh, abolished the uh, three-pillar uh, structure of the uh, EU. Uh, the uh, European Union uh, became a single legal order with a legal uh, personality uh, in international relations. Uh, CFSP uh, became uh, one of the EU uh, policies. Uh, the treaties also uh, unified the uh, EU's uh, objectives in external relations, both for, for uh, CFSP and for uh, other uh, external uh, relation. The Treaty on uh, European Union uh, explicitly uh, separated the common uh, defense policy as a part of uh, common foreign and uh, security policy and gave European Union uh, some new tasks uh, in the field of uh, defense. Uh, in addition to the uh, so-called Petersburg Commission, uh, the Lisbon uh, Treaty uh, uh, enabled the European Union to uh, conduct uh, missions related to military advice or post-conflict uh, stabilization uh, and also uh, a commitment to uh, collective um, self-defense in the event of armed uh, aggression was incorporated into European uh, integration uh, strand. Uh, thus, the existence of uh, Western European uh, Union as a separate organization become redundant and in uh, 2010 uh, the president of the Western European uh, Union uh, Council uh, declared that uh, the organization had fulfilled its historical role and its member states uh, had jointly decided to extinguish the modified uh, Brussels Treaty and uh, dissolve the uh, Western European uh, Union. Uh, however, the Treaty on uh, European Union uh, maintained uh, many of distinctiveness of the uh, common foreign and security po policy and especially a common uh, defense uh, policy. Uh, uh, firstly, uh, firstly uh, the Treaty on uh, European Union uh, in, in the Treaty of uh, European Union, the common foreign and uh, security po policy is the only one of all EU policies and actions, especially external actions, uh, to be set out in the provisions of uh, Treaty uh, uh, on European Union. Uh, other external actions of the EU, uh, for example, uh, common, uh, common commercial policy, uh, development cooperation or humanitarian aid, are regulated uh, in a treaty on functioning of uh, EU. Uh, secondly, uh, the separation of the common foreign and security policy from the catalog of uh, other EU external policies and actions is a move uh, aimed at uh, highlighting its uh, distinctiveness and uh, special character. Under uh, Article 24.1 uh, 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 Treaty on EU, uh, the CFSP is subject to specific rules and procedures and is implemented primarily by uh, those EU institutions uh, which are intergovernmental in nature. <coughs> uh, the, provision, the provisions of uh, the Treaty on uh, EU provided that member states 
uh, with a much greater ability to protect their national interest uh, than another external uh, action. The special nature of the uh, CFSP uh, is underlined by uh, two declarations uh, attached to the uh, treaties. Um, uh, it means declaration number 13 and declaration number uh, 14. Uh, in accordance with declaration number uh, 13, uh, the provisions uh, of the Treaty on European Union do not affect the current responsibility of the Member State for the formulation and conduct of their own foreign policy, nor the way in which um, they are represented in third countries and international organization, uh, nor do they affect the specific nature of the Member State's security and defense policy. And Declaration uh, number uh, 14 emphasized that the provision of the uh, CFSP will not affect the existing legal basis, responsibility or powers of each member state in relation to the formulation and conduct of its own foreign policy, its na national diplomatic service, its relation with third countries and its participation in uh, international organization, including, of course, uh, participating uh, uh, a few member states uh, in the United Nations Security um, Council. Uh, thirdly, uh, the distinctiveness of the uh, CFSP is evident at the le level of uh, the distribution of uh, competence between the EU and its uh, member states. Uh, the uh, CFSP is not among the exclusive shared and coordinating complementary competences. Uh, this is underlined by the uh, Treaty uh, on Functioning of EU, which uh, does not categorize the, the uh, CFSP into one of the above three types of EU competences, uh, while Article 2.4 of the Treaty on Functioning of EU indicates that in accordance with the provision of the uh, uh, treaty on the EU, the Union shall, ha shall have competence to define and implement a common foreign and security policy, including the progressive framing of a common defense um, policy. Uh, furthermore, uh, the treaties uh, leave it to the member state to conduct policy on public policy and the protection of internal uh, security. Uh, it is contained in Article uh, 70, uh, 76. Uh, treaty on functioning of uh, EU. Uh, fourthly, uh, the intergovernmental nature of uh, CFSP uh, derives from the nature and manner uh, in which it is institutionally uh, implemented. Uh, the Treaty on European Union excluded the possibility of adopting legislative acts under the uh, CFSP. Uh, thereby uh, ruling out the adoption of regulations uh, or directives and thus ruling out the unification and harmonization of CFSP law. In its place, the uh, Treaty on European Union introduced general guidelines and uh, decisions adopted by uh, European Council or uh, by the Council. Uh, on the institutional side, the exclusion of the possibility to adopt legislative acts under the uh, CFSP means that supranational uh, institutions like uh, European Parliament and European uh, uh, Commission have been practically excluded from the decision-making uh, process. Uh, in accordance with uh, Article 24.1 uh, Treaty on European Union, uh, the definition and implementation of the CFSP has been entrusted to the European Council and the Council. And so uh, those EU institutions which are uh, intergovernmental uh, in nature. Um, uh, the Treaty on European Union also limited the competence of the uh, Court of Justice of EU uh, to hear complaints and preliminary uh, questions uh, concerning the uh, CFSP. <coughs> I'm sorry. Mm, uh, generally, uh, the Court uh, 
of justice of EU is seen as a motor of, uh, of European integration. And this is uh, the reason why member states decided to significantly uh, limit its competence in the field of common foreign security policy and common um, defense policy. Uh, pursuant to Article uh, 24.1, uh, the Court of Justice has no jurisdiction uh, over the uh, CFSP with the two or three uh, exceptions. Uh, these exceptions uh, are contained in Article uh, uh, 40 Treaty on EU and Article uh, 275.2 Treaty on Functioning of uh, European, uh, European uh, Union. <coughs> and uh, it means that uh, the Court of Justice jurisdiction is almost entirely excluded uh, in this area and legal instruments uh, adopted under the CFSP and uh, CDP, Common, for, uh, common Defense Policy, uh, are practically beyond uh, judicial uh, control. Uh, the, same concern, uh, the same concerns uh, the European Commission complained against Member States on a basis of Article 2, uh, 200. Uh, 58 Treaty on Functioning of uh, EU, and the uh, European Commission uh, cannot start the uh, procedures from Article uh, 258 of uh, Treaty on Functioning of EU and complain to the Court of Justice against member, uh, member uh, state. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I would like to focus on Article uh, uh, 40. Uh, 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 according to uh, Article 40, the implementation of the uh, common foreign and security policy shall not affect the application of the uh, procedures and powers of the uh, institution provided for in the treaties for the exercise of uh, EU competence and conversely um, the implementation uh, of EU uh, policies, amongst other external actions, is without prejudice to the application of the procedures and powers of the institution uh, provided for in the treaties for the exercise of the CFSP uh, competence. <coughs> Under Article uh, 40, the Court of Justice acts as a guardian of the uh, borders uh, between the CFSP and uh, other EU uh, policies and actions in particular, the so-called external actions uh, of the um, Union. Uh, the Court has uh, emphasized on several occasions uh, that Article 40 uh, statutes the distinctiveness of two regimes from the one side, the EU uh, policies and actions of a supranational nature, and from uh, the another side, the CFSP and uh, common defense uh, policy. Uh, Article 40 also emphasizes that the Union's uh, competence under the uh, CFSP uh, and under other provisions of the uh, Treaty on Functioning of EU uh, relating to uh, Union policies and actions are not mutually exclusive but complementary, uh, each with its own scope, scope of applications and pursuing different uh, objectives. Uh, it means that uh, the court, the court of justice, is obliged to ensure that um, decisions adopted, adopted in the area of uh, CFSP and uh, CDP do not encroach on the uh, competence uh, which the provisions of the uh, Treaty on Functioning of European Union confer on the uh, European Union in the policies other than uh, CFSP. And um, uh, under Article 40, uh, the court has no general competence to assess the legality of acts adopted under the CFSP, and the only objection uh, uh, it may consider is the appropriateness of the uh, legal basis. Uh, when it comes to uh, Article uh, 275.2, uh, according to this uh, provision, uh, the Court of Justice has the competence to review the legality of decisions uh, providing for restrictive measures against uh, uh, natural or uh, legal person adopted by the Council. It should be emphasized that um, 
the right of individuals to bring uh, direct actions against uh, decisions uh, providing for restrictive measures against them is an important novelty uh, introduced by the Lisbon Treaty. Uh, interestingly, that uh, Court of Justice has developed a jurisprudence whereby Article 24.1 uh, refers to Article 275.2 uh, not to define the type of procedure by which the court may review the legality of certain decisions, but to define the type of decisions whose legality may be reviewed by the court in the context of any procedure uh, for such review of um, legality. Uh, thus, Article uh, uh, 275 provides the court with a basis for reviewing the legality of decisions providing for restrictive measures against natural or legal person in a twofold procedure. Uh, one procedure is contained in Article 263 and uh, it is complained against uh, legality of EU Act. And the second procedure is set out in Article 267 and it is a procedure uh, uh, for preliminary uh, ruling. Um, I think it is worthy to note that the Court of Justice uh, has the competence uh, to answer the preliminary uh, ruling concerning uh, common foreign and security policy only in a situation in which a national court asks about the validation of secondary law and only when a preliminary question uh, concerns the decision imposing restrictive measure. The Court of Justice cannot examine another decisions, even if uh, they were passed in the area of uh, common defense policy or common foreign and security policy, and uh, cannot examine uh, primary law, uh, even if uh, uh, it is contained in Title IV of uh, Treaty on uh, European Union. <coughs> According to Article uh, 275, the jurisdiction of the Court of Justice concerns uh, decisions adopted only by the Council, not by European Council, but only by the Council, and it does not, de uh, and, and, and uh, um, uh, not all decisions issued under the Common Foreign and Security Policy and imposing uh, restrictive measures uh, can, be some, uh, can become uh, the subject of a complaint under uh, this article. Uh, the condition for uh, challenging uh, these acts before the EU court uh, is their individual uh, nature. <coughs> uh, and the, uh, at the end of my speech, uh, I'd like to focus on a possible activity of the uh, Court of Justice uh, not mentioned in uh, Article 40 and in Article uh, 275, but also concerning uh, common foreign and security uh, policy. It is uh, problematic uh, whether the Court of Justice has the competence to give an opinion on the compatibility of international uh, agreements uh, with the treaty, it is uh, a competence of the Court of Justice contained in Article 218.11. Uh, 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 According to, uh, to uh, this uh, article, a member state, uh, the European Parliament, the Council uh, or the European Commission may obtain the opinion of the Court of Justice on the compatibility uh, of an envisaged agreement uh, with the treaties. Uh, the competence of the Court of Justice to give such an opinion is, of course, not in doubt uh, in the case of international agreement uh, concerning another than uh, CFSP uh, external uh, action, actions uh, regulated by the uh, Treaty on Functioning of EU. But it is problematic when the envisaged agreement uh, relates exclusively or predominantly um, to the uh, common foreign and security policy. Uh, 
Uh, on the one hand, Article 218.11 uh, 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 is a part of the uniform procedure for the conclusion of international agreements by the EU, which also applies to uh, all aspects uh, of common foreign and security policy. But from the other hand, Article 218.11 uh, confers competence uh, to request the Court of Justice opinion, also to the European Commission and to the European Parliament, um, uh, to the bodies which are generally excluded from uh, common foreign and security uh, policy. But taking, taking into account the systematics of Article 218, uh, uh, my, my point of view uh, is uh, that the Court of Justice has the competence to give an opinion on the draft international agreements which exclusively or predominantly concern uh, the uh, common foreign um, and uh, security uh, policy. According to my point of view, uh, the competence to examine the international agreements pointed out in Article uh, 200. 18 is the third competence of the Court of Justice of EU, but not mentioned in Article 24, 40 and uh, 275. Thank you very much.